Tanse, Sego, Buju, welcome to the 2021 Outside Looking In Annual Showcase. My name is Vans Banzo, your favorite comedian from Cree territory, indigenous or otherwise. And I am thrilled to be here hosting this wonderful event. OLI has been empowering indigenous youth for the past 14 years through dance, mentorship, leadership. Tonight, we are celebrating our participants and showcasing their talents and their accomplishments they've made through this past challenging year through sheer will and grit. Throughout tonight's show, you'll hear from OLI dance participants who have been dancing remotely all year, RBC future leaders who have been paired with mentors to explore all of their opportunities beyond high school, work study participants who have been earning college credits through Fanshawe College, and from OLI storytellers who have been working in their communities and who will have the opportunity to share their stories. We also have some tremendous guests lined up that we're super excited to introduce tonight. accepting donations at any time through the link in the caption or online at donate.olishow.com. That's donate.olishow.com. Every 20 bucks goes to Vance, so why not donate? Let's kick things off with a look back at this past year and a message from OLI founder and CEO, Tracy Smith. Take it away, Tracy. Hi everyone, I'm Tracy Smith, the founder and CEO of Outside Looking In. This year marks the 14th year of our annual show, celebrating the achievements of our participants. We welcomed brand new faces, as well as returning alumni from Nova Scotia to West Vancouver, from Niagara Falls up to Iqaluit, Nunavut. We recognized a need in the Indigenous community to build strong leaders, offer mentorship and guidance, provide access to structured play through dance, and a platform to tell our stories. This year, we led participants through high school, college, and university. Like in years past, we've developed a network of Indigenous peoples across the country and supported their successes through many different challenges. This year, our calendars were full with Zoom meetings as we watched our participants grow through personal projects and their commitment to themselves and OLI. I am so proud of what we have achieved. So much of the world was put on pause through the pandemic, but each and every one of us kept moving forward. Dance has always been a huge part of Indigenous culture, and it has always been a huge part of what we do at OLI. It's about movement. It's about recognizing and celebrating our strengths and our skills. Dancing to us means striving and persevering through it all to advance together as a community. Our annual showcase highlights some of what we have accomplished this year. We are outside looking in and we are still dancing. That's the lady who signs my check. Thanks, Tracy. A year ago, when so many programs were being canceled, throughout the country due to the pandemic, OLI pushed through and pushed ahead and created a series of weekly classes to help keep our participants engaged. And yes, one of those classes did involve me, Vance Banzo, doing a comedy workshop through the Second City Toronto with my friend and colleague, Franco Wynn. So let's take a look at some of those highlights of the summer challenge. People are just waiting to respond as opposed to truly listening to what people have to say. About 5.30. Hey Vance, you weren't listening. Oh, listening. 
Right, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, well, in this game, if you can follow along... Explosion! If you want to get jiggy with it, swing it around, boom! Swing your arms like that, swing it like that, swing it like that. However you like, whatever feels comfortable, get your arms moving. Steak is very salty, so I'm not gonna add salt until the end. And the beans, because they're canned and the You can actually learn as you're teaching someone else. After you finish the last seven and eight, step behind you. So then you can transfer your weight to the back and go one and two. You can go from an organizational system that might look like this to something that looks more like this. Uh, also, it just gives you a sense of accomplishment. Uh, so those are my two tips that I, that I use daily. I have a little summary of my day. Let me show you what that looks like. So this is a little picture frame that we used to have that I, I don't use anymore. Naturally, you know, all these things will have like an intro and outro. But we're just going to look at like what, what those things are and like also too is like how, to find, how do you find inspiration for a song? All right, that's just the hands. Out, two, three, four. A uh, second part of this video, what I wanted to do was something fun. And this is where we will be making uh, a catapult today. I'll hold, hold everything in place. So if you can tell, I'm still holding this in place, otherwise it'll go. Well, summers just can't be about watching Tall Boys on CBC Jam. Even though there's two seasons, it's easily, easily digestible, uh, produced by a Canadian legend, all that nonsense. But when I was a kid, growing up in Alberta, we used to spend our time outside, building road blockades, you know, playing uh, dances with wolves. And I always had to play stands with fist. Oh, well, I started with dance as a means to motivate students to engage in high school and to reach for further success. And dance is wonderful. And it fills the body with endorphins. I mean, so many people do it. Even cultures do it. I mean, animals do it. Kwachi, from the 2010 Vancouver Olympics. Remember him? Kwachi does it. Oh, Macarena. So, but it's a little out of date, Quachi, but <laughs> you get, okay, man. Okay. okay, that's enough, Quachi. My time with OLI goes back to the very beginning when I was living and working in La Croix First Nation and Tracy came up to teach the kids to dance, right from the kindergarten kids right up to the high school. And at the end of the week, uh, the students put on a community performance in the gym. And what we noticed was the profound effect that this performance had on the students, the parents and community members. So Tracy came up with this idea, you know, what if there was a national charity that could work with Indigenous youth right across Canada to keep kids in school, motivate them, and give them an avenue for self-expression through the arts. It's really made an impact on me because I've got to watch students develop such a sense of personal growth, uh, self-confidence, and resilience. It's just such a huge accomplishment for them. And when they look back, and they, they see how they didn't give up, they kept on going, they learned to ask for help if they needed it, and they practiced, 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 and they got better at what they set out to do. Um, it's really, really rewarding. And just like the students, when they get to the end, they just wanna do it all over again. And what's amazing is that as the, the year goes on, you get to watch the students come alive as they, as they go up against challenges, as they figure out how to solve problems, as they learn to reach out to other people. And you get to watch a community form as they start to work with the other students in their class. One thing I've learned this year um, with OLI Dance on Zoom is 
that no matter the circumstances, um, no matter what kind of a day you've had, if you're tired at the end of the day, you go home, you crank on the music, you, you find a friend or a pet or just yourself in a space and start moving around, especially if you can throw a few spins in there and everything's gonna be okay. dancing because it's really fun and you can move your body around. I'm back and hello. Excited. I don't know why. I wish I could move like that, but I can't. Uh, uh, dancing is such a great way to keep the youth engaged. I mean, this next dancer is from Sogin First Nation in Northern Manitoba, and he fuses traditional Métis jigging with hip hop dance. You may have seen him on TikTok, and he goes by Dizzy Feet, and he's inspiring youth all across the world to dance. I want you to please welcome Mikey Harris. OLI needs your support to keep our Indigenous youth dancing and learning, so please consider donating. We have also have sweatshirts and masks available at Amazon for purchase, and the proceeds go towards helping us reach more Indigenous youth. Up next, we have our RBC Future Leaders. Future Leaders youth created internet businesses, music videos, dances, and more. Many of them are now pursuing post-secondary education. That's huge. So congratulations to the RBC future leaders. Here they are. Hi everyone, I'm Dale Sturgis, National Director for Indigenous Financial Services at RBC. We are thrilled to be back supporting Outside Looking In again this year. So first of all, thank you to Outside Looking In for all of the critical work you are doing to support Indigenous youth. And secondly, congratulations to all the participants and everything you've achieved in the program this year. We couldn't be happier or prouder of, of you and we look so forward to seeing all of the great things you're going to achieve in your life. And we at RBC will be behind you every step of the way. Congratulations, everyone. This pandemic had definitely added an extra element of difficulty to the RBC future leaders this year. But it is also exactly this reason why the success of our program participants are that much more rewarding and gratifying to witness and be a part of. Switching the RBC future leaders to an entirely online method of delivery was not easy as it posed accessibility challenges for our most remote communities. 
Coping with this pandemic has had an immense impact on our participants' mental health. And for these reasons, we knew that our participants needed something to uplift and motivate them to keep moving forward. We knew that they needed a community of staff, peers, and mentors that would encourage them to be more resilient given our current times. Some of the ways we kept the future leaders engaged this year are by inviting guest speakers to talk about mental health, leadership, public speaking skills, and confidence. We have also started Homework Power Hour, which is a weekly online work-study session open to all the participants that needed extra help working on their assignments with the help of a teacher. This has been extremely beneficial, especially for students that were experiencing school closures during the pandemic. We have also scheduled monthly mentor and mentee check-ins, game nights, art workshops led by Indigenous artists, including beading, paint night, sweet grass basket making, drum making, moccasin crafting, to keep our Olai community connected in a positive way. One of the highlights of the Future Leaders this year is definitely having those same participants present their final projects in the final presentation. For me, the fact they were able to turn on their cameras, use their voices, and tell us about their ideas was a success, a huge success. I am also extremely proud of our new OLI participants this year for setting such a high standard in the RBC Future Leaders. Your consistency, commitment, quality of work, and leadership does not go unnoticed. You have inspired your peers to keep moving forward, and for that, we are thankful. I want to be involved in making sure that they start that journey early because they do have that potential and we all have that leader inside of us. I feel amazing. I feel like I'm the best version of myself right now. And this program has got me to where I am today. And I feel absolutely fantastic. For me, my mentor has helped me improve my communication skills and helped me develop ideas. and. Um, she's just my number one cheerleader this year. I can just message them and they're there to help me and guide me in the right path. So it's really important to have someone there that's on your side. I believe that I have become a more confident and productive person and that I've also become more determined to build connections with others and reach out to them while working towards my career goals. Or how much you guys want, want to believe in us. And I feel like we do really, really do appreciate that and we just want to like work hard and make that worthwhile. You'll learn more about yourself, you'll learn more about others and your knowledge, you'll gain your knowledge. I would tell them to just go for it. Like it's really, it's a nice program. We noticed at the beginning of the program here, not everybody was comfortable or confident enough to even put on their cameras, let alone share their ideas and thoughts. But as we continued throughout the year with our workshops and events, and we continued to build our relationship with our participants, we noticed a change. We saw their confidence and their comfort levels grow. And in particular, one student, she was really shy at the beginning, but as she continued to attend our events and get to know us a little bit better we saw her become a leader among her peers and uh, encourage others to share their own ideas and thoughts and it's been incredible to see and be a part of I also love seeing the relationship that mentors and mentees form throughout the program year. They have the opportunity to connect with someone outside of the world and they get to learn from one another and it really is a beautiful thing to see. Through this program um, many of my former students um, have really gained um, a sense of identity, um, Indigenous identity. And I feel that's one of those foundational pieces that really need to happen. And OLI um, has done that for many First Nations um, students. The Future Leaders Program is incredible. Um, it's an amazing way to build community among Indigenous youth across the country, as well as a valuable way to learn skills, create opportunities, and just have fun. I have learned so much this year from my mentee, Celine, in terms of lessons of determination and perseverance. A few years ago, I attended the OLI Annual Showcase, and I was really impressed that night. Not just with the performances, but I was moved by the stories and the shares of the OLI youth, by their drive and determination to succeed, not just for themselves, but so they could give back to the community. Just watching these kids grow um, and develop life skills and develop confidence, and um, it's it's so inspiring to me, and and just teaches me 
you know, that you can overcome anything really. So I, I love it. I think it's such a great program. Jade has really used those challenges and those difficulties that she's been faced with this year um, and found a way to use those opportunities and those experiences to really develop her skills further, um, both as a social worker and also as a young Indigenous woman. Uh, and I'm so proud of Jade for all that she's accomplished this year. Uh, this year, I have an excellent mentee named Samia. She's extremely accomplished and she constantly reminds me of how far we can get with hard work and perseverance. Uh, I learned a lot from Gwen. I was blown away by her poetry during her presentation. I learned from Gwen it is important to do what you love, um, be inspired by the things around you, um, and pursue your passions. This is my second year as a mentor for the Future Leaders Program, and um, I'm really enjoying it. Early on, on my first year, I knew that I would likely come back. Um, I really appreciate how um, the program is structured in a way where um, mentees are not passive learners, and it's very much a collaboration. Don't be afraid to challenge the status quo. Whether you want to be an entrepreneur, a politician, a photographer, or a rapper, Follow your dreams and follow your heart. Strive for the best and the best that you can be. Thank you RBC for like allowing the Future Leaders program to keep moving forward and allowing us to be a part of it. I also want to thank RBC for making the Future Leaders program possible. I'd like to say a huge thank you to RBC for definitely pulling this whole program together and supporting us throughout our whole journey. This has been an amazing year. We are full of friends, workshops, teachers, everything was just so amazing. I'd recommend this to anyone because it's just a, a great experience. Amazing. What great work by our RBC future leaders. And kudos to the mentors for volunteering their time to guide our youth toward a brighter future. Another kind of mentor for our youth is actually our next guest from Maswa Sagigan First Nation. He's been making a lot of noise in the world of TikTok using his comedy that shares his humor, his joy and his love and he shares it with all of us, his followers. So please welcome the real deadly Brett Muswa. Why hello there folks. I'm here to tell you how to believe achieve and do stuff with that stuff. So the only way to successfully succeed is by successfully believing. And the only way to believe is by successfully successing. And you need to go down deep into the earth's crust and gather out that life's essence of wonderful, weird things of such. So if you know how to dig deep with shovels into yourself, then gently scoop those itty bitty stuffs that are in there and just slowly bring them up and let it sprout like a weed into the sky. And what on earth are you talking about? You're just being I'm weird. I'm trying to show them. You're trying to show them weird. Well, how would you do it? I wouldn't do it weird. Okay, fine. Why don't you just get I'm done. There? You do it. Let me do this. I have failed more times than I can count. I have questioned my ability to overcome obstacles that faced me. I have lacked in confidence in the face of adversity. Failure was a foe in my vulnerable mind. And as time passed, I came to realize that failure, even with all my doubts, became one of my greatest teachers. We don't need to be afraid to fail. Failure is just as important as success. One builds character and the other builds growth. You will fail and you will succeed. And that is life. Welcome it with open arms. So be yourself when you fail, be yourself when you succeed, because being yourself requires no fear.
these are uh, Cree syllabics. They translate to outside looking in, in English. You can buy one too if you want it, and every purchase goes to support indigenous youth. How good we look. For OLI work study, OLI teamed up with Fanshawe College to give our participants a chance to earn college credits. Daily Zoom lessons with Fanshawe were supplemented with additional instruction from OLI program managers and weekly live talks from special guests. Higher education is important to us. It's something that we believe in. I wish that my college was over Zoom. I mean, I was not a fan of any of my roommates or the fact that I ate ramen noodles five times a week. I can't even talk about it. I, Indian Taco Tuesdays. I requested them to my cafeteria and they went ignored. You know, it didn't matter how many celiacs I brought over to the cause. Uh, we set up uh, road blockades. Uh, we, we blocked people out. We, we really, we wanted Indian. Good evening. My name is Jane Sutherland and I'm a third generation member of the family behind the Tough Chain Foundation. We started working with OLI in 2012 when we saw the potential impact this group could have on Indigenous youth. Since then, we have witnessed the impact and the success of this program through its participants. As a teenager myself, it is rewarding to see that OLI is providing these youth the building blocks they need to be successful in life. Over the years, we have seen some quiet kids start the program and evolve into fantastic leaders that can clearly demonstrate their own strengths and their pride in helping others follow in their footsteps. The Tashane Foundation is proud of our involvement in OLI and their success in building future leaders for Indigenous communities. Thank you, and I hope you can see the positive impact that OLI has the same way we do. It was an incredible journey watching the participants from the beginning of the, oh, the work study program to the end. Uh, the people that I saw join the program are not the same people that I see now every day. Uh, for example, there's one participant who is this incredibly gifted writer. Her prose, her poetry, incredible. And I would never have known, the world would never have known if she hadn't have joined our program, gained the confidence, and chosen this safe place to start working on this journey of self-expression that she's on. And where she's at now is incredible. And uh, I just can't imagine that uh, the world didn't have her in it before in this way. The work study participants were such a diverse group of individuals, but the one thing they had in common is that they were all on this journey of discovery, and really it was discovery of self. I'm thinking of another participant who, from the beginning of the program to the end, she had goals, she had dreams, and she had no idea how to get there. And just in, you know, even in the last week, I've heard her say things like, I understand my value now. And one participant saying, something as profound as that shows me that this program is doing exactly what it needs to be doing. During my time with Outside Looking In, I found I have become more confident. When I first joined OLI, I was a very quiet and shy and unable to speak in front of a group of people. As we worked through projects together, the things we did and learned helped me to open up. This program has definitely helped me to come out of my shell and in the future, I will be able to use my voice a lot more. Thank you. OLI. Stepping out of my comfort zone can be difficult at times. With me having anxiety and trying new things, it can be overwhelming. Um, and jumping straight into it with OLI, I had to be on camera, speak about my emotions, do things that I wasn't comfortable with or never tried. And it threw me right into the ocean and I had to swim without even learning to end. I enjoy that actually. It helped me a lot to grow as a person and be more confident. And I appreciate everyone I alive for that. My journey with Outside Looking In has been a very interesting one. Who would have ever thought that this 50-something grandmother could create a Facebook page, TikTok video, or any video for that matter? Thanks to some really great people I did. My son Jordan, Heavenly, and Caitlin to mention a few. I also need to mention Kizik, Jordan, and Jenna for the non-judgmental guidance throughout this experience. This is one of the reasons I continued when I felt like giving up. Thanks for giving me the support and positive input to continue. During my time with OLI, I learned that whether it's in person or online, it's hard opening yourself up and being vulnerable. Opening up is so much more difficult than it appears, but 100% worth it. A truly amazing feeling. 
The future holds so many new beginnings for me, from buying a house and a cabin for my kids and I, to new career goals. OLI has helped me realize my worth and helped me learn my strengths. Thank you, OLI. OLI. If you told me last year I would be here, I would not believe you. We went on a journey, created a community with a bunch of strangers around Canada. We did many meaningful activities. We did a Zen garden together. We learned about cultural things. We did paint nights and activities. I even got a jacket. Thank you all life for the memories and the adventure. Life is crazy. One day you think you have it all figured out and then bam, things happen. I just wanted you all to know that I believe that things happen for a reason and we stumble upon things and meet people not by chance. I believe there's a reason that I'm enrolled in OLI right now and I'm so grateful for all the support and for all the things that I'm being taught. Thank you, OLI. OLI came along at a time in my life where I felt that I was living in a world of fog. I didn't know what direction to go or what I wanted to do with my future. I felt like I was surrounded by fog and there was no way out. But with OLI, I've been given so many new skills. I've got a sense of community. I've built more self-esteem, learned to love myself. Thank you, OLI, for helping me walk out of the fog. Well done, work study. It's nice. It's nice to give an applause. I love the idea of introducing people to college courses with Fanshawe and OLI as a partnership. I love that idea and I love Taco Tuesdays. Okay, up next we have Matt Mack from Garden Hill First Nation in Northern Manitoba. He's known as being a blind artist, but honestly, he's so much more than that. He's a writer, he's a rapper, he's a producer. He's truly the complete package. I want to perform a song called Break Me Down. It talks about breaking down the barriers to, to, to achieve your dreams. And um, yeah, that's what the song is about. And I just want to say, look, this song is going out to the ones who really have a passion and don't really know what to do with their passion because of their current situation or their current whatever it is that may be preventing them from achieving that dream. I just want to be, I just want, I just wanted to say, look, you see me right here performing this a song for you guys. And, um, I'm not saying this just to make myself look weird. <laughs> I'm saying this just to inspire. So with that being said, yeah. here's Break Me Down. I'm up in my mind again, man, I don't know I'm looking for the better days, I'm losing hope I'm trying to be a better me, look what I become I'm out here living my dreams now Ain't nobody gonna break me down I swear they wanna see me fall But I ain't gonna give up now I know I gotta break down the walls Yeah Growing up in the rares, it wasn't always easy I remember feeling like life wasn't for me Searching for my dream, trying to find my way out Searching for some answers just to find some clarity Now I'm being looking back at them days I've come a long, long way I made a few mistakes, but I Know that I will make it one day yeah. Find myself, yeah I couldn't do this by myself, I got my mom to thank All the things you're going through, mom, it'll get better When I blow up, I'll promise to send you letters I know this ain't easy to hear, but I'm up in my mind again, man, I don't know I'm looking for them better days, I'm losing hope I'm trying to be a better me, how could I become? I'm out here living my dreams now, ain't nobody gonna break me down I swear they wanna see me fall But I ain't gonna give up now I know I gotta break down the walls Just know I'll be fine 
Yeah, I appreciate you guys for having me. All of you guys rock. <laughs> yeah, let's think one more time. I'm up in my mind again, and I don't know. I'm looking for the better days, I'm losing hope. I'm trying to be a better me, how could I become? I'm out here living my dreams now. Ain't nobody gonna break me down. I swear they wanna see me fall, but I ain't gonna give up now. I know I gotta break down the walls, just know I'll be fine. Outside looking in, thank you guys. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. We out. OLI Storytellers followed six indigenous youth from all different areas across this country as they developed a unique story that showcases their lives through video and photography. Right on, no, hmm? Stay still, chin up, lips out. Mm-hmm, that's right, mm-hmm, right? Okay, you're moving too much? Still, stoic, you're looking at, you're looking at a mountain. Oh yeah, that's it, that's it, mm-hmm. I live in a First Nations community, Kiwewin. It is north of Thunder Bay, Ontario. And this is my story on what it's like to live in an isolated northern community during a pandemic with, with mental health issues. And I'm here to bring you guys along on my journey here. I see so many youth out there struggling, feeling alone, not having anyone to talk to, and I don't know, they're forced to keep it all inside, and you know what happens if you keep everything inside for too long? You know, picture this, it's a bottle, right? And the, the more it fills up, the more chance it will explode, so this is why I s I signed up for this position so I could, uh, you know, start something with this these youths to to overcome this problem because our youth they're so they're so amazing, you know, like all the things that they can do for this world. It's just oh, it's amazing, like. How come nobody's listening to them? You know, this is something that I really feel for. And I I had to do something about this. So so I I thank you, Maureen, for for reaching out to me to sign up for this position. Hello everybody, my name is Aurora Aminika Inose. I am a 21-year-old Anishinaabekwe from Wikwamkung Unceded Territory located on Manitoulin Island, Ontario. Going to school within the pandemic has been pretty crazy. I think there's ups and downs to both sides. I feel like I enjoy online school because it works with my own schedule. But at the same time, I miss in-person classes because it kept me accountable in going to class and receiving that knowledge and talking to my professors and also meeting other students. I feel like that's something that's been really lacking this year is my community. I chose Carleton because I fell in love with Ottawa as a city. I was lucky enough as a young girl that I came here for a hockey tournament during the Winterlude Festival and it was this magical winter wonderland. I skated on the canal, I saw ice sculptures and I fell in love with the old buildings. I knew that I wanted to go to Ottawa. I knew I wanted to go somewhere far. I wanted to discover who I was and see what the world had for me. But as the years have passed on and I've gained some knowledge and I've experienced life, I don't know, I'm excited to come back to my community. I'm excited to bring my knowledge back to my community in hopes that we can work towards creating a more culture-based approach to social work, incorporating culture into social work. That's my goals. That's my dream now. Community culture that we have with land-based learning, it gives you that connection to history, knowing that our ancestors have been there, have done it. We are here now. She is here now. She's providing those experiences. She's learning culture and connections, and she's making a legacy for herself. I know that Indigenous youth are going to do great things one day, and we're going to change the world. And I'm excited to see it. 
we're able to um, survive in our communities if we keep our history and our culture strong when it comes to helping our families in the social field. That's me. That's who I am. <laughs> and then my mom was telling me she either had to find a roommate or she had to move because she couldn't afford the place where she was staying. And I thought to myself, I should move in because we're always like, I'm always there, we're always hanging out, we're always going out together. So I thought, me and you should room in, Mom. And she thought it was a good idea. But I told her, I don't want to move into your place, though, because, you know, her place was a typical North End place, really run down, really not a good place to live. I'm totally going to do it because, you know, my mom's been taking care of me, like, since I was a little girl, since I was born. <laughs> And uh, so I definitely wanted to do that. It was in my heart. I didn't have much plans, but I still had a little bit of a plan. But I multitasked and we got everything done. And now I'm like, what's gonna happen next week? What's gonna happen next month? I'm like excited because I'm in a new place. It's like new beginnings. So I wonder what's gonna happen next week. What kind of adventures and tasks will, will I put me on. It was a fun, adventurous week because I got to go all over my community and capture photos and B-roll and I had so much fun doing it. And I learned, I actually relearned how much I love doing videography and photography because I was in school doing training and then I went and started to get back into work and. COVID hit and then I was like totally had no jobs for a long time and then I relearned how much I loved it and how much I enjoyed doing this and that I can do this like every day of my life because I love it it's fun it's a creative way for me to express my feelings and and inspire other people and educate them hi I'm Kaylee Smoke and I'm a music photographer I want us to talk about the lack of indigenous representation in the music industry. So I asked a couple of my friends who are both at different stages of their music career what they think. My name is Sungadawan. When I got introduced to music, I just, I, I knew that it connected with me right away. The only other indigenous person that I knew was a musician called Aaron Peters. He came and performed at my junior high school. Ever since then, I was like, oh, I could, I, I could do music too. I just put out a record uh, last year. I worked on a Sony production called Reckoning with the Windigo. And then I did another one, Healing the Nation. My name's Cody Bowles, and I play in the band Crownlands. I decided that I wanted to pursue music and watching my dad play drums. And, you know, the way it made me feel when I'd hear him playing music was amazing. So amazing that I had my heart set on that. I've had a couple indigenous idols growing up. Uh, my father and Buffy St. Marie. I think one of my favorite accomplishments that we've done so far was tour with Jack White. Also, those two Juno nominations we were just nominated for were a pretty huge moment. While there's certainly more of our people represented in the music industry in the present day, there's still not enough. So I think the people who are represented are very accomplished artists. I think that it could be something that people focus on more and, and bring up as more of a big issue because I feel like it's important to have Indigenous voices heard. Other than hiring us, how can the industry encourage and make space for Indigenous people in musical spaces? Um, I think j just listening to them rather than looking at if they can make money off of them. You know, that's where the disconnect is. I feel like it starts with having proper equity between people who are on res and off res. Advice for the Indigenous people looking for jobs? Really find that passion and, and stick with that passion for playing and play outside of your res as much as you can. And above all else, just be yourself and be a good person because it pays in spades to be a good person. In other words, be so good that they'd be stupid not to hire you. The community has taught me family. Family is everything. And how everybody sticks together, a lot of the community members, they really look out for each other, especially the youth. I feel very positive about living in Picanticum. I think it is one of the safest places in Canada. So uh, anybody asks me, am I safe here? The answer is a definite yes. And I think being in Picanticum, where like we kind of have this bubble, it helped a lot also with my mental health because back home, I wasn't able to meet up with friends or family. But here I can still meet up with friends, like obviously, 
Um, we wear masks at work and around the community, but at least we can still have those kind of like connections and social interactions. The struggle was only in the beginning when uh, the people got to change from wearing masks, social distance, that kind of stuff. Once everything was in place, put together, it was good after that. Some of the hardest things for me was trying to stay in touch with friends and family back home. Um, since we're working in a remote community, we have to quarantine before coming in, so that meant that like I didn't get to spend as much time in the summer with my family as I normally did. I didn't thought it would be this serious. Can't breathe. I feel trapped. With what you're doing, can you tell me why you're helping the community? Because I used to be a part of the Catskill. Um, back when I was a young, young kid, I lived here for about 10 years of my life. And I found a great opportunity to come back to my community where I felt at home. What are your biggest challenges about helping the community? Trying to get grocery items up here for the cheapest possible rate. When my university went online over a year ago, they took my access to traditional teachings at the Indigenous Student Center with them. It was difficult timing for me to lose those teachings when the rest of my life also entirely changed and I didn't want my learning to end. To keep learning traditional knowledge, I spoke with knowledge keepers from across Turtle Island and learned about their journeys as Indigenous artists before creating my own art project. I decided on beading point shoes, which are the shoes worn in ballet for standing on our toes. I felt like this was the perfect project because it focused on two parts of my life that are so important but often separate. I did not find many people who had done this before, which was not especially surprising because ballet and Indigenous art do not usually overlap. However, I was very lucky to be able to consult Summer, who created the art piece Red Earth on Point, the only example of Indigenous beaded point shoes I could find on the internet. On my shoes, I was trying to capture my experience through this journey using a floral-inspired design to represent growth and abalone shelves for my West Coast family. Although Dancing on Point is not Indigenous, I think the storytelling through movement and art align perfectly with what I have learned about our traditions, so the idea quickly evolved into a performance. Dance is something that has been part of my life for as long as I can remember, and my favourite has always been ballet. Ballet allows us to take the story in whatever direction and emotion we are feeling without needing to say it through words. Thank you storytellers, fantastic work. OLI started as a dance program over 14 years ago with the mission to motivate youth to excel in school, to engage in self-expression and to celebrate their feelings of empowerment that come through personal achievement. Dance will always be at the heart of what we do, even as we grow to introduce new programming. Our youth are talented and push through challenges, both mental and physical. And take it from me, dance is not easy. Although these guys, they make it look that way.
Outstanding. Those dancers uh, really need to step up the game if they want to compete with old fancy feet. Fancy Banzo. Slip in my DMs and see who can two-step. Okay, we're getting close to the end of our show, but not before we hear from a very special guest who will speak to all of our participants who are graduating this year. From Enoch Cree First Nation in Alberta, she was an inspiration to so many Indigenous youth when she became the first Indigenous woman in Canada to win the Mrs. Universe title. And she continues to be an inspiration and role model today through her extensive volunteer work, her notable TED Talks, and as a recipient of the Role Model Award from the United Nations. I'm uh, still waiting for them to phone me back so I can receive the same award. So if, uh, slip into my DMs if they know their number. All right, so please welcome the amazing Ashley Collingwell. Tanse everyone, my name is Ashley Collingwell and I'm so proud to congratulate you all on your outstanding achievements. I personally know the challenges of overcoming obstacles and stereotypes to fulfill my dreams. I've had to deal with people telling me in so many different aspects of my life that I don't belong. Whether that be my education, acting, and even my activism work. But I want to let you know that you belong wherever you want to belong. At times I've had to create my own space to stand tall and make my dreams a reality. That's why I've learned it's so important to try things out of your comfort zone because you will always learn something new about yourself and you truly get to see what you're made of. Your time at OLI gave you that opportunity. You had the opportunity to learn and to understand that dedication and hard work can make your dreams a reality. You now also have the confidence to start creating new goals and I encourage you all to live fearlessly and never let fear hold you back from chasing your dreams because you never know what you can accomplish. One important thing that I've learned from my grandmother about achieving success is that you're a role model whether you know it or not because you never know who's watching and looking up to you. I want you all to keep that in mind while going forward because the positive ripple effect you leave behind will empower the next generation to do the same. Today is just the beginning of your new journey towards another goal and accomplishment in your life. Now is the time to dream big and show this world what you're made of. Congratulations, everyone. You should be so proud of yourselves. Chi miigwech for everyone watching and helping us celebrate these achievements of these amazing Indigenous participants. OLI is always looking for new communities and individuals to join our programming. So if you're interested in bringing a program to your community or joining us as an individual, please send us an email or just slip into our DMs. In order for us to continue this great work, communities can now register for our program so that we can empower, motivate, and support Indigenous youth on their journeys to success. Thank you everyone for your unwavering support and being an integral part of our OLI 
community. It's been a tough year. Hell, I'm being rained on right now. But these guys push through. And I really can't wait to see what the future holds for all of our participants. And in, if any of them need a, you know, a, a, like a backup dancer for their life, just, just everyday life, you know, uh, I'll be here. Hype man, Vance Banzo. Okay, you guys have a good night. Thank you. <laughs>